is a pair. If I for E a holomorphic vector bundle of rank N on the Riemann surface such that, and the condition of the group that has a determinant which is trivial, is also going to be reflected here, so such that the determinant of the bundle, so that the topic steer power of the bundle, topic steer power of the bundle is trivial. So this is the line bundle, and we're going to ask for it to be the trivial line bundle. And the Higgs field, which also has a trace as a matrix, will have trace here. E from E to E tensored with K, holomorphic, such that trace of the Higgs field is here. So if you have a special linear group, this is what a Higgs bundle is. If you have a symplectic group, what you'd get is a symplectic vector bundle, so a bundle with a symplectic uh, bilinear form, a non-degenerate bilinear form, and the Higgs field will be compatible with the form, so it will commute with the symplectic form. For orthogonals, you have an orthogonal form. You can go back to this example and try to see, can we see the structure here? Our vector bundle was the sum of a line bundle and its dual, so when we take the top exterior power, which is the second exterior power here for a rank two bundle, it, this is the product of the two line bundles, and the product of a line bundle and its dual is trivial. So we can look here and notice that the top exterior power of E is indeed trivial. And we can look at our Higgs field and how we formed it, and our Higgs field was indeed traceless. So this is not just rank two Higgs bundles, but is SL2 Higgs bundles, SL2C Higgs bundles, SL2C stable Higgs bundles. You can kind of see how from this perspective we have uh, a notion of stability already for our old pairs, and that's the stability that we can consider. For these groups, the stability condition that we define for the vector bundle expression of E phi will apply to principal bundles, and so we're not going to go through uh, any more stability. The important thing is that we can construct the modelized space using that stability condition, and I'm going to call it MGC, so let's put here the notation. M G C, the moduli of uh, isomorphism classes of, and we're always going to be talking in these lectures of A, B, C, D, or the GL case of uh, semi-stable. GC Higgs bundles. So in general, this space is not smooth, but it has a hyperkähler structure that we're going to be using. So it's hyperkähler. which means it has a, a family of uh, complex structures and of symplectic forms associated to them, which are compatible and which will give a lot of structure to the moduli space. Um, okay, so be, we can carry on defining um, more uh, generalizations of Higgs bundles. You can look at real groups. So at the end of the lecture, if we can, we'll take a real group and put the same idea into a real form of a complexly group. You can put mark points and define Higgs bundles which have structure on those mark points. That's parabolic structure with um, with filtrations of the bundle and waits for that filtration that satisfies some conditions with respect to stability, and then you have a moduli space of Higgs bundles over these manifold with mark points. You can also drop the, the condition of holomorphicity and allow for Higgs bundles to have poles over certain mark points uh, with which you would get wild Higgs bundles or tame Higgs bundles. You'll see these things at the end of the lecture. These are a few more generalizations that we can do to the moduli space of Higgs bundles and to Higgs bundles themselves, which will carry a lot of interesting uh, information. And before we do that, I want to mention a few things that are interesting. Uh, yes? So actually not necessarily, I think. Uh, for, for now, we're just going to be ABCD type, 
But I'm going to show you uh, when looking at uh, correspondences between Higgs bundles that you could take a non reductively group. Yeah. Um, you could, so, yeah. We're going to look at the cases, for instance, uh, later on of SL2 cross SL2 and see how Higgs bundles can be put together. Um, Probably, I, I, I don't know so much. I can look for the references. Um, I can't recall how they, they constructed the model space. Um, yeah. Uh, remind me and I'll look for references for you. Uh, I think it's probably going back to Simpson. Um, yeah, or Faultings. There's a few papers that have some information of more general Lie groups. So the model light space of Higgs bundles is what some people call the Dalbu model light space. Uh, let's keep this example here. Um, so Dalbu. Yeah. And one of the interesting uh, things appearing from Higgs bundles, and let's just use uh, the more general version that we just defined, the modular space of principal GC Higgs bundles, are correspondences between the space and other spaces of objects. So the first correspondence, or um, the, the couple of correspondence I want to mention, come from work of Simpson, Hitchin, sorry, not order, uh, Donaldson, and Corlette. Back in the late 80s, beginning of the 90s. And this is the modular space of Higgs bundles, like we said. And this is uh, through non-abelian Hodge correspondence. This is the name that Simpson gave, non-abelian Hodge correspondence, that we sometimes write NAC, uh, is in correspondence with the space of flat connections. So MDR, the Duran modular space, of flat connections. So flat connections for our Riemann surface, our base Riemann surface that we're talking about. And through the Riemann-Hilbert correspondence, Riemann-Hilbert correspondence, this model A space is in correspondence with the space of representations of the fundamental group of your surface. So this is what we call the Betty model A space. So model A MB, the Betty, Modular space of representations, reductive representations of the fundamental group of the Riemann surface into your group GC, uh, quotiented by conjugations. So, by studying the modular space of Higgs bundles, so this was of GC, Higgs bundles. You can understand the information about the moduli spaces of uh, flat connections and of representations. The properties that carry so these correspondences are uh, this is a diffeomorphic correspondence as real manifolds and an analytic correspondence. They're not algebraic. And so many properties that the cohomologies, for instance, of these spaces should uh, that have and that they should relate to each other are still not uh, proven. So if you've heard before of the work of, uh, for instance, Tamash Hausel and his collaborators on uh, a P called W conjecture, and there's people here working on that. I think maybe Vivek is working on that. Um, there's people here that you can talk to about properties of these spaces and cohomology uh, dimensions, for instance, of these spaces and how they relate to each other. But one thing that we can do, for instance, is understand uh, the structure of representation. So can I deform a representation into another, would, which would be translated into understanding the connected components of this modular space in terms of the modular space of Higgs bundles? If you want to see how this relation goes, uh, just from um, 
a rough perspective, uh, let's say, uh, take a solution of the self-duality equations. These self-duality equations, those that saw it on Friday, are equations for a connection on a Riemann surface. The connection will be a flat connection that has some holonomy, and the holonomy will be the holonomy representation that will give you the representation point in this moduli space. And through the connection, you form the Higgs field um, that appears here. So there's going to be a relation that appears between these three spaces, and we're always going to be asking w the interpretation of objects in these three terms. So if I give you a Higgs bundle, which is preserved by, say, a finite group acting on a Riemann surface, uh, I'm going to ask, what are the equivariant flat connections equivalent to in terms of Higgs bundles, or what are the representations that are equivariant under that action? And we're going to understand the moduli spaces. Mostly people look at representation moduli spaces and understand them in terms of Higgs bundles. There are certain representations that become very interesting lately in the last year or so. For instance, Gishara and Binhar proposed that there is something called theta stable uh, representations. And those theta stable representations are not understood just yet in terms of Higgs bundles. So understanding who are these objects in terms of Higgs bundles and which connected components give us these theta stable uh, representations, can we define a theta stable Higgs bundle? This is something that's an open question. So if a way of getting new open questions in the area is by looking at uh, work done in the other two uh, directions, so in plant connections and representation theory, and trying to understand them here and vice versa. So in the last few minutes, I want to tell you one more uh, description of Higgs bundles for a real group, since this correspondence with uh, representation theory was later on extended. So Brad Prada, Garcia Prada, uh, Gotham, and Mundet, and some of their collaborators, they extended the, the correspondence, the Riemann-Hilbert correspondence, to representations into real groups. And they correspond to real Higgs bundles. So for real Higgs bundles, we need to take a real group. So here we had a, a complexly group. For now, we fix our Riemann surface of genus at least two, a complex Lie group, and we can fix the real one. So G, real Lie group. And many times we're going to consider real Lie groups as real forms of the complex Lie group. So recall that a real form, just re recall a real form of the Lie group GC can be thought of as a real subgroup that complexifies to GC or as an anti-holomorphic involution that fixes G. So is a real G such that the complexification of G is our complex Lie group or equivalently an anti-holomorphic Involution sigma acting on the complex Lie group such that it fixes or whose fixed points is the real form, where the fixed point set GC fixed by sigma is a real group. So we're going to take that, we're going to take a real Lie group, take G real Lie group and take H its maximal compact. And so that when we uh, define Higgs bundles, we can carry on looking and the constructions. Let's put here uh, an example. So let's take SL, SL, say 2PC as the complex Lie group. Uh, so this is GC. And let's take our real form to be SUPP. 
it's a special unitary matrices with signature PP. So matrices in SL to PC, which preserve a Hermitian form with signature PP. We're going to do things with this. We're going to get the maximal compact. So what's the maximal compact in this case? It's S of UP cross UP. Uh, we are asking, really, this should, let me just put S of U. Matrices with trivial determinant. Special, uh, in the sense. Let me just write S, as, as UP and SUP, okay? So, um, but the S is uh, really outside, so you're, don't, you're not asking for matrices with trivial determinant, each of them, you're asking for the product of those matrices to have. Trivial determinant. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. Uh, so once we take a maximal compact, we can look at the Lie algebras. For Lie algebras, using the maximal compact and its Lie algebra, we can get the Cartan decomposition. So with Cartan decomposition, uh, the Cartan decomposition of the Lie algebra G of the group G as some M plus H. So M here is the orthogonal complement of H. Okay, so here we have SUP cross SUP. We look at the Lie algebra. The Lie algebra will be of diagonal, sorry, the Lie algebra will be diagonal with something here, a matrix here. Uh, yeah, let's call it A and B. And when we look at the orthogonal complement, M, it'll be off diagonal. Something here and something here. So by considering the, this Cartan decomposition, we can look into isotropy, the, the isotropy representation for the group. So let me just Make sure I don't forget anything here. Uh, so let me define the, the isotropy representation, or what people call isotropy representation. It's obtained through the joint action of G uh, restricted to H. On uh, So we're going to say is I from H to GL, and it's obtained on GL M for M, that orthogonal complement. And what we're doing is we're taking a G and we're making it act. So a G in this here, we're making it act on a point X. So it's going to act on X as at G on X. And through this isotropy representation is that we can form uh, we can look at the complexified one that goes, so I see complexified from HC to GLMC. And through these, we can form vector bundles whose structure is in the fibers is MC. So with these, we, we consider, consider bundles, vector bundles. Uh, well, there are principal bundles, right? So. Let me just put back the run. Since we're going to see them as vector bundles, E, which are going to be, we're going to write it as E of MC, and it's really just a, a, a natural vector bundle E with a product through the, the isotropy representation MC. So MC is given the structure to the fibers of E. And the definition we can do now using that is that a G Higgs bundle, so a G, so now it's not complex, it's the real group, a G Higgs bundle is a pair E phi for E 
uh, for E, a holomorphic HC bundle. So the complexification of the maximal compact gives the structure to the vector bundle, and phi, it's going to be a holomorphic section, but now it's a holomorphic section over the Riemann surface of this bundle that we constructed here. The MC principal bundle tensored with K. The same happens as when we were doing uh, Higgs bundles for complex Lie groups. We can think of them as pairs E phi, where we're adding some extra conditions which reflect the nature of the group. And we can see them uh, just as we were doing before in terms of matrices. I have uh, four minutes left. It's an hour, right? Is it? Yeah? Okay. Um, so in, since we started with this, let me just uh, do a couple more steps to show you what uh, this, this is happening here. So what do we have here? Uh, if we were taking, if you don't like the S, since you, the S here, we can start looking at U, UPP and see what happens for UPP. Uh, here, our H was here. Uh, the little h, the Lie-Al algebra complexified that we want. Uh, let me put it here, the complexified Lie-Al algebra. We have GL PC plus GL PC. So our complexified Lie-Al algebra and a complexified um, orthogonal complement will be matrices A and B here, A and B here. And when we look at UPP Higgs bundles, or for that respect, we could just put a Q. There's no need of having the same thing here. We can just have a different rank. We just need to make sure that we remember and we put it in the complex one if we want, P plus Q. And so a UPP or UPQ, UPQ Higgs bundle. is a pair E phi, where what happens? Now, E was coming, the structure of E comes from HC bundle. So H is UP cross UP, so it's going to be a decomposition of bundles of E into two uh, UP cross UQ, so for E equal to some V plus W, where V and W V, W, holomorphic, are holomorphic bundles of rank P and Q each. And the Higgs field structure comes from the structure of the orthogonal complement. And here, the orthogonal complement, we said, was the off-diagonal matrices, the GL. So, and phi is going to be a matrix. Can you see if I write down here? Yeah, phi is a matrix. Um. So phi here is a matrix, which is going to be off diagonal. So I'm going to put a beta and a gamma here. And who are this beta and gamma? Uh, beta goes. So we just do it in terms of this bundle. So beta goes from W to B tensored with K, holomorphic, and gamma goes from B to W tensored with K, holomorphic. So just by studying the nature of the Lie group, the Lie algebra, the Cartan decomposition and its isotropy representation, we can deduce the structure of these heat bundles. And this pretty much tells you also this example how to do how to deal with Higgs bundles with signature. Anytime you have signature, you're going to have to take a Hermitian form that's preserved, and you're going to have the maximal compacts decompose. One more thing to mention is that, and then I'll stop, is that the structure group, as we said, comes for the Higgs field from the orthogonal complement of the maximal compact. So what happens if our form G is itself H? So if e G is H then there's no maximal, 
It's the maximal compact is the whole thing. There's no orthogonal complement, right? It's zero. And indeed, whenever G say remark, and then we'll finish, remark, if G is compact, so G compact implies that the Higgs field is zero. So when G is compact, you recover pairs E phi for phi is zero, but when you look at the moduli space and you ask for stability, if phi is zero, you're looking at every subbundle. So really, the moduli space of Higgs bundles for G compact is the moduli space of vector bundles. And this is how you can see vector bundles inside, a way of seeing vector bundles inside Higgs bundles. What we're going to do tomorrow is we're going to study these moduli spaces through a, an integrable system, and we're going to use that integrable system to motivate a bit further beyond these three correspondence. I want to, correspondences. I want to introduce a few more directions through which we can ask questions and which you should keep in mind when considering research uh, projects. Thank you very much. Yes. Yes. Uh, so once I I look at the decomposition I'm, uh, the decomposition of M and G uh, of G in terms of M and H, you mean? You, so that's a good point. So what you need to remember is which representation you were using. So we've been using standard representations for things. Uh, in principle, you could have, you could write UPQ Higgs bundles in terms of more complicated things if you looked at uh, representations. Um, but if you if you fix it from the beginning, yes, it's un it's a unique object that you get, up to isomorphism classes. Yeah. Any other question? Thank you.